Hey, what is up guys and welcome back. So today we're going to be taking a look at the top ESC list of 2019. This is quarter one of 2019 and we're going to see what still sticks out the best and also check out the budget ESCs and the difference in ESCs and as well as how to go about choosing an ESC blindly. So first of all, we're going to go ahead and take a look at a good result and a bad result to get a clear representation and to get an idea of what's really going on here. Now here we have the Spedix IS-34 in one ESC on the left and we also have the Hollybro Metal Tico 32 ESC on the right. This is a single ESC and this is a 4 in 1 ESC. This is a very very bad result. You do not want to see this into an ESC. And don't forget this is a 4 in 1, this is a single and there's no comparison. But this is just to give you an idea of what is a really bad result. So. Let's go ahead and jump over to the things to look for. Now, when you want to, when you're looking for an ESC, something that has not been tested or something that was just released, here's a couple pointers that could be pretty useful, especially if you're new and maybe you just didn't know these things. Now, the first thing you want to look for is capacitors. And the reason for that is if you find an ESC with a lot of capacitors, that means it'll have better filtration on board. So you won't see something like this. You'll see something like this. And that's what you want. Your system wants to see a very clean voltage. Now, in a perfect world, this would be a flat line. That would be like the perfect ESC, but there is no such thing because when you apply power, your voltage or your battery is going to sag. And that's what you see here. But in terms of noise, we don't really see that much noise compared to this. This is the noise you do not want to see in your quad. And that can affect gyro, mid throttle oscillation, burnout components. It's just very terrible. So the first thing you want to look for is capacitors. That's a really good step. And it doesn't always mean you're going to have a good ESC, but it'll give you a better chance of, of getting a better ESC. Second thing is big MOSFETs. Now, this doesn't always, it's not, this is not always true. Um, now, if you're going to be using something with a 6S setup, now bigger FETs is just one of the telltale signs you should be looking for. For example, we recently got the Hobby Wing, which was rated up to a 6S. It was like a $100 ESC. And when I ran a 6S test, that thing blew up on me. It was using the baby MOSFETs. Now, this is this is an example. This is a Tico 32. It's using, I think, 3x4s or 4x4 MOSFETs. They're a lot larger. They could dissipate heat a lot better. And theoretically, they're going to run better. They could handle more current. So, and again, it's not always the case, but it's something also that you should kind of look for, especially if you're running 6S. Third thing is a shunt resistor. Now, this is not really something to look for unless you're looking for ESC telemetry. I mean, any some ESCs do have ESC telemetry and what ESC telemetry does, it allows you, uh, it gives the flight controller back information such as RPM, current, voltage, and some other things as well, even temperature. Uh, but the current sensor here is a really nice addition. You don't always get a current sensor with the telemetry. Now, if you do have that, what you can do is you can control the current that's going to the motor. Uh, this way you reduce the chances of blowing it up. Basically in a bad crash, there won't be such a very bad rush of current into it. That's one thing you can use it for other than the telemetry part. So this is kind of optional, but if you're getting ESC telemetry and you're expecting to have current reading, make sure you look for this guy, as you can tell right there, that's what you want to look for. So let's go to next over. Low ESR capacitor is your best friend. And why do I say that? Well, here's an example. This is the same ESC here. It was called the Solo Good ESC. I'll have a link to everything down in the description. If you check those out, those greatly support the channel. If you guys also do like this content, let me know. I'll keep doing content in this type of nature every once in a while. And I do also have a Patreon. If you would like to support me there to enable me to do such things, that would be super awesome. Now, and again, low ESR capacitor is your best friend. I'll have some link down below that I use. Uh, as you can tell here on the left, we have a very bad ESC. This is a single ESC. And again, it's called the Solo Good. It is really, really, really noisy. And as you can tell, with just one low ESR capacitor, look what it did. It made it run as clean as a premium ESC. That doesn't mean the ESC is going to perform like a premium ESC but it'll protect your overall components and it'll allow the ESC to run much smoother. And you can actually even hear this in your motor if you have a terrible ESC, something you would pick up immediately. If you had a very bad one and a good one, you could totally hear the difference in motor. And again, I have links to some low ESR capacitors down below that I use and I highly recommend. All right, so now let's take a look at this. This is pretty interesting. This is the same ESC with different capacitors. Now forget the 100 microfarads, this is 1000 microfarads. So this test was ran with four ESCs on a quadcopter running at the same time, four motors, very noisy motors. I think they were the Emax 2306, 2400 KV motors, which are really noisy. And this was a very bad ESC. So here we have no capacitor. 
Here we have one 1000 microfarad capacitor for all of the ESCs, basically just connected on the power terminal. And on the bottom here, we have four 470 microfarad capacitors. Look at the difference. This, is, this basically means one 470 microfarad capacitor on each ESC here, because these are not four in one ESC, this is our single ESCs. And here we have five. So, I mean, if you go over five, there's really no point to go, I mean, you, there's really no point to go over four and possibly even two. But as you can tell, there is a night and day difference here. This is something what you would call a almost a perfect result because of these capacitors and what they've done to reduce that amount of noise uh which is why i say a low asr capacitor is your best friend even if your esc is a really good esc it doesn't hurt to add one now let's go into the top four and one escs not all of them will make it but the ones that really stand out in the newest ones currently all right so the first on my list is the ori 32 and again it'll be linked down below now, this one is an amazing ESC. Now, you might look at it and say, oh, this is a terrible result. What the hell are you smoking? Well, that's not the case here. This is, don't forget, this is a 20 by 20 stack. And I didn't test this 20 by 20 stack with some baby 11XX motors. I've tested it with 2306, 2700 KV motors and four of them, not just one, four motors. And I thrashed the living crap out of it like I would do with a normal big 30 by 30 stack. And for it to hold out this good for a 20 by 20 stack is absolutely remarkable. And again, this is a 20 by 20 stack. So this test was good. It even performs better than some other 30 by 30 stacks in the market, which is why I have this up here for the 20 by 20 stack for one ESC test. So if you put any motor like 2205 and below, this will perform like an absolute beast. So keep that in mind here. And some have reported they ran it on 6S and there's even some videos online that show it running on a 6S setup with I think some 22XX or above uh motors so keep that in mind so this is why this is on my top four in one esc list here now next step we have now these orders doesn't mean the best to the worst these are just the, the top ones in the top list uh they all have their advantages and disadvantages as well the dal rc rocket four in one esc not the engine the engine is still good and i use it on my favorite build however the rockets do perform better now we have two versions we have the 45 and i think the 55 amp or the 60 amp version both of them basically perform identical as you can see here the top is the 45 and the bottom is the 60 or 55 amp they both perform just on par with each other so it just comes down to your budget and what you have in your pocket you'll be able to run the same exact thing on both just keep that in mind maybe the fets are a little bit better on the 60 amp but you're not going to really see that much of a difference now they both run up to a 6s which is really good something you want to see now these testing results were from a 4s so keep that in mind as well so dal rc rocket is in the top tier of foreign one escs and again links are in the description so let's go ahead and see the next one now we have the t motor t motor has been doing pretty good i would say actually lately so here we have the results from the t motor f55 amp four in one esc and the f45 amp four in one esc they perform pretty good but obviously as you can tell here the f55 amp performs a lot better i would say not a lot better but it's performing way better now they both are running f3 microcontroller units which is a lot a lot faster than most of the other escs and this is going to be kind of in the future and upcoming of escs so if you pick one of these up you're going to be future proof for a while especially if the bl 32 uh firmware is going to be updated with some crazy cool new things if possible so these are really good escs and um the f55 amp is obviously better here and you can check the links down below now also, the Hollybro Tico 32 4 in 1 ESC. This is not the metal, the metal I still have not tested. Um, so, this is the first, the, the, the best Tico 32 4 in 1 ESC. This is still by far one of the best tested 4 in 1 ESCs on the market. However, there has been reported issues with 6S low KV. Now, if you're running a 6S, I think above uh, 1900 KV, you might have that issue, or 1850 or 18. I don't know the exact details, but you can run into that issue, and some people have. So, keep that in mind. But overall, this is a really great ESC. And um, it was basically, I think it was meant more for a 4S, and I, 4S is just performs absolutely phenomenal. And obviously, once you take it up to a 6S, uh, the low KV kind of just doesn't really work. And that sometimes have to, has to do with the microcontroller unit. And that's why we see the F3 microcontroller unit on the T motors here. However, they've addressed that with their new metal, Tico 32 metal form on ESC, which is a 60 amp, so 65 amp rated with f3 microcontroller units so yeah that one's has been addressed um 
what else do we have here? So yeah, and on top we have the throttle noise test, and on the bottom we have the simulated uh, flight noise. So it's still one of the top, the top in the top tier of ESCs here. Now let's talk about some of the top single ESCs, the ones that really just stand out the most, to be honest. So let's take a look at this here. Here we have the top four to six S single ESC testing results, which is the T Motor F45. Now don't mix it up with the four in one. This is the single ESC with the Hollybro Metal Tico 32. Uh, three to six s esc as you can tell there's a also if you take a look at the bottom we see the price difference the t-motor is 30 bucks the metal is 25 bucks but the metal has uh, just better fets on board a lot better fets and the filtration is about identical to each other and you can kind of see that here they're both identical i save five bucks and i get better fets here this would be my choice but then again this comes back to you here we have t-motor again this is the simulated aggressive flight maneuver you can see that the t-motor is I mean, they're on par with each other. You're not going to notice the difference. Neither the quality is going to make any difference here. But yeah, the, it's not worth an extra five bucks in my opinion. But this is, you know, this is just a comparison you decide for yourself. And obviously these will be linked down below here. So the T-Metal is still performing good. So is the T-Motor at 45. And these differences in performance here doesn't really uh, do much in the real world. They're still basically, you can consider them identical. Now here's just another comparison here if you wanted to take a look at it if you wanted to pause the video you can go ahead and do that and this is the interesting part here budget versus premium now some people think that if you're paying 10 bucks you're getting something pretty shitty well you're actually wrong here sometimes 10 bucks is better than 40 bucks in escs so here's a simulated flight noise and what we have here is the spedex is 30 single escs not the four in one escs which is on the left and it costs only 10 bucks and you might say why is it only 10 bucks well this is a d-shot 600 it's not a bl heli 32 it's just a normal bl heli s and what's it used to be a premium esc it used to be around 20 25 bucks and obviously now they're still making them they're still good the people are still uh buying them because they perform good and I see why people would still buy them they perform as good as the premium ESCs now in the premium ESCs obviously there's some things that are different which is 6s which capable up to 6s f3 microcontroller units and telemetry but if you just have 10 bucks and you wanted a you know, a premium performing ESC you could still get a premium performing ESC for example the Spedex IS30 I'll have it linked down below all right guys so that's going to conclude it for this video the summary is you can get ESCs for 10 bucks that perform like $40 ESCs and even $30 ESCs. I'll have those linked down below. Um, I will be setting up a place soon on my forum where you can actually see the testing result for each ESC as well as have the uh, FPV footage that I've recorded through my testing and as well as the uh, pictures that you saw the graphs or the oscilloscope uh, tests that we just took a look at. I'll have them for all ESCs. And also do you have a Discord if you guys want to go join me there. You can ask me about Neuroflight and other projects that we're currently working on. Or if I did a mod video you had questions about, you can go join there. Uh, join my discord i'll have it linked down below and i'll have everything here talked about and some of the things some of the ESCs i have not talked about linked down below if you could check those out those obviously those greatly support the channel and if you like this content and if i help to avoid or make a purchase please consider joining my patreon that'll absolutely help the channel and i'll see you in the next one peace out guys